Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you all for your testimony today. I remember looking at a really interesting data set right on the back end of the Great Recession when we had recovered most of our employment. And what it showed was that though over that period of time, a lot of people had become unemployed and then a lot of people had been reemployed, there had been this really fascinating shift in terms of age demographics. What had happened during that time was that older, the percentage of the of older workers or the percentage of older Americans in the workforce had dramatically increased, whereas the percentage of younger Americans in the workforce had plummeted. You'd essentially, you'd essentially seen this shift of young people in the workforce coming out and older people um, going in. And the sort of long-term data here is pretty frightening, right? Between 2000 and 2018, workforce participation rates for those ages 16 to 19 fell from about one half of the population to one third. That's stunning in an 18 period, 18 year period of time. And we know it just got worse during the pandemic because we saw again a bottoming out of summer job opportunities for um, for teenagers. Um, and so I, I wanted to focus just, and I'll ask this to the to the panel and maybe direct it initially to um, you, Mr. Beard, but then open it up to others. Um, I want to talk about barriers to employment for teenagers and for um, young workers, because it's those early work experiences that set the platform for later success. And we just have a stunningly fewer number of kids who are having those positive workforce experiences when they're teenagers. And if you have these barriers later on in life, they're just compounded by a, a, a lack of uh, exposure to the workforce and to job skills when you're in those early formative years. So are there specific things we need to be thinking about in order to overcome this pullout of the workforce of teenagers? Um, because it seems to me, given the, the data telling us something has happened very quickly to that population, we need to have a targeted policy to address those barriers. I think there are several things, uh, Senator, and thank you for the question. The first is we need to start, obviously, in the school system and creating opportunity there. We've got some really good examples in Houston where our employers have partnered with the school districts and the community colleges to do pre-apprenticeship programs that then provide summer internships you know, at $13, $14 an hour that create that culture. And it also has the employer's responsibility of working with the school system to actually ensure, uh, to Senator Kane's point, they're developing the essential skills. Uh, I think the second one is uh, Mayor Turner uh, in Houston uh, has advanced his Hire Houston Youth Program, which really engages the business community to provide summer inter paid summer internships uh, to, to, to youth in Houston. And then third, I think there are opportunities about how do we work with community-based organizations to you know, support students as they get ready to, to go into internships during their school years. But then in, at the other point is how do we open up the funnel uh, with employers once they've left the school districts to find pathways, which is a really difficult thing with Opportunity Youth because they've disconnected from the system. I'll let others respond. I'm... Sure. If I might, Senator, uh, we are in the seventh year in Detroit of Grow Detroit's Young Talent, which is the city's summer youth employment program that the mayor launched when he, uh, when he took office. Every year, we place more than 8,000 young people uh, into opportunities. We target 14 to 24 year olds, so certainly covering the opportunity youth that Mr. Beard is referencing. These are essential skills jobs. These are jobs working in our, um, our fire cadets and with our police department and with community-based organizations. We think it is an essential way to ensure that the pipeline of talent of young people are engaged and that more importantly, have relationships with local employers so that over the long term, they have an opportunity baked into their future. And I, I, I thank you for these responses. It, this intentionality about making sure that young people have those experiences, which does often involve some amount of subsidy, I, I think is required in a uh, economy where so many more older workers now need to stay in the workforce longer. You'd love it if the private sector had the solution for these kids. But ultimately, with so many 
folks needing to stay in the workforce longer in order to make sure they have enough for retirement, in order to make sure they have food on the table, we're going to have to be a little bit more intentional in the mechanisms by which we use, sometimes using subsidy to get those kids those skills they need early on. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair.